IPA. Get it in the glass. Unfortunately, in Northern Ireland, licensing laws don't let us sell directly to the public, and um, so we've had to be really uh, creative and quick and nimble and pivot a lot over the last couple of weeks, just like a lot of other businesses. So Paul called me uh, last Monday and uh, told me he was on my mind that he realised our roots to market were shot and that he'd love to help us sell some beer. So I got off the phone with him, cried a little bit, wept with joy, and then got to work. So we've sent over five beers to start with, and we're just going to taste through them now. Uh, first beer we've sent is American Pale Ale. It's one of our biggest sellers, and it is delicious. It's 3.5%. Uh, it's full of Munich, a little bit of crystal base malt, some wheat. We use Chinook and Summit in it, but really sparingly. So it's a three and a half light, easy drinking beer. And it's a perfect introduction beer uh, for those that are just getting into craft beer or looking to push the boundaries a little bit more. Quite melony. get chamomile as well, weirdly, from it. Very nice. Cheers. Good eye. Good eye. Second, uh, second beer is Forever Ago. Forever Ago is our core uh, New England IPA. Their artwork is absolutely stunning. I mean, I know that we, you know, we went through artwork that's not a million miles away from this as a, as a season range. And if I'm honest with you, I never, I never really picked up on um, on how close we got to Boundary's artwork without really spotting that, but uh, absolutely gorgeous paintings. Okay, let's check this out. We use loads of oats, loads of wheat, and we jam pack at 16 grams a litre with uh, mosaic and with citra. Pretty fresh, uh, packaged just last week. Jesus Christ, that is fucking juicy. It's 50-50 mosaic and citra, um, so you get some of the kind of tropical, almost um, blueberry-ish uh, notes from the mosaic, and citra does what it does best, which cuts through that with citra. Um, body texture might feel much, much higher and further, obviously, than the 3.5% pale ale. <laughs> I tell you what, um, I'd be... If this is one of our beers, I'd be fucking buzzing. What an aroma on that. It's big. It's really juicy. It's got that... I always look for a pepperiness in a, in a New England IPA. I don't want... I don't want something that's... got any burn to it or... that's... flat. I want something that's kind of peppery and a little bit... A little, almost like it's getting up your nose already, you know? Dank as fuck as well, it's dope. Okay, let me check it out. Oh yeah. Oh, Jesus. I tell you what, for Boundary to put something like this together, you know, it seems a bit of a downer, doesn't it, to talk about the fact that Boundary have got this, you know, East Belfast location, they're somewhat juxtaposed to the to, to what's going on around them. There's not not loads, you know. Being over at Boundary, being at the brewery, there's not a, a million and one things to do on their doorstep. They're a little bit that estate that they're in, that wonderful sort of warehouse uh, complex. Um, it's really its own thing. It's its own scene. Bunch of small businesses, bunch of independent businesses, um, doing something in that in that part of Belfast that that didn't exist there before. Um, and Jesus, definitely nothing like this existed there before. Let's put the glass on my nose, like actually just. Mm, that's not very cool. Um, I know we keep banging on about it, but we've got some of the some of the best and most accurate brewing equipment next door that you can get for a brewery of our scale. It does what it says it's gonna do. Um, you know, 
classic West Coast American brewers from Pizza Paul, Ale Smith, Green Flash got up and running on our kit. Um, and, and being in, in Boundaries Brewery and seeing what they're working with, it's not, it's not um, the most compromised that I've seen, but it's also not the steadiest setup that I've seen. It's not the setup that necessarily guarantees success, guarantees repeatability time after time. It's a, it's, it's a setup that the guys have to work around and, and f they have to fit their, their whole schedule around what that kit can do and, and how that kit can function. And for them to produce beer like this, I mean, absolutely solid, impressive, incredible aroma, wonderful flavor on this uh, on this New England IPA. For them to produce that um, in that context is just fucking solid. Hats off, hats off to those guys. I don't just want to talk about the beer though um, because that's not the only reason that I love Boundary. Um, they're truly some of the nicest human beings I've ever met. Uh, not, not in beer, um, not in the beer industry, um, I mean, they're actually some of the only people that I've met in Belfast, but they're truly the, the nicest uh, people that I think you could hang out with. Uh, and, and the community that they built around them, their cooperative model is, it's just flat out inspiring. Um, Matthew at the head of that company is one of the most loving and generous and incredible business leaders that I've seen. Um, he's got an incredible vision for what people need in their lives and he's making it happen. And that context that he's working in in Belfast and Northern Ireland is pretty fucking tough. I don't know whether I've been to another brewery that is as compromised as Boundary in terms of what they can do with their business and how they can interact with their customers and what they can get going in terms of community offering. And yet, that somehow hasn't held them back. It hasn't made Matt or any of the other team members think, fuck it, we'll just throw the towel in and compromise what we want to do because we're in this compromised position already. Absolutely not. They've decided, no doubt right from the off, um, to throw themselves at top-end beer production. Matt was kind enough when I stayed with him um, for a weekend, he was kind enough to open up his first brew. He opened up this 750, he had three or four or something left in, in at home, no stock elsewhere. And it was one of the most fascinating, delicious mixed firm beers I'd, I'd ever had. Um, first fucking guile. We made a pale ale next door. It was shit. <laughs> and we made an Imperial start after that, and that was shit. Um, they were, they were, they got us going, but they were nothing to write home about. Like to go to to go to Boundary and check out beers on of that quality from the off. It's just incredible. Look, you guys need to to get moving on this stuff. We're one of Boundary's only income streams right now. The stock that we've shipped over is Boundary's income stream right now. Um, Northern Ireland is compromised in the way that breweries can sell to their consumers. Uh, we, we shipped over a pallet of beer from Boundary. We're taking what we need operationally to cover packaging and handling and shipping of that beer. Um, and. 90% of that margin goes straight back uh, to Boundary. You guys need to rinse us out of this stuff right now. And I wanna get another shipment in from those guys next week and I want you to rinse it out again. And I want us to go through their entire stock. Uh, it's dope beer. Don't miss it. If you've not had it before, trust me, jump in on it. It's incredible stuff. Cheers, man. Good luck to you, brother. This beer really uh, is based on an old export stout recipe uh, from England from a long time ago and it really showcases the brown malt from Simpsons. Uh, brown malt is probably the best malt in the world, particularly from Simpsons. 
and it's one of the main reasons why we've stayed with them as a good fighter. I think their brown mold is really incredible and it's really well showcased in this beer. Um, so a little bit of black malt, just a touch, some light crystal, some wheat, be a small, but really all the brown. And what that's doing is giving the kind of dry, roasty, toasty without the astringent bitterness that you can get from other darker malts. So it ends up as quite toasty while being at the same time quite smooth. Much better than the other black shite that comes from this country is a stout. And uh, yeah, 7%. Oh, cheers. So the first thing that intrigues me the most about this is the amazing oil painting on the front of this. It's got this almost rustic, rural, 19th century look to it, which just makes me think, what am I going to get inside of this? Is it, is it going to be some kind of super intense uh, heritage stout or am I going to get something modern? Um, so let's see. First thing I'm getting is a lot of hops, which is a fantastic thing. It's really malty, really, really dense flavour, really dense aroma. So the fantastic thing about this beer is that it's it's very modern. It doesn't, it has what I would call heritage elements. It's really, it has roastiness, it has it has bitterness, but it also has a lot of chocolate, a lot of a lot of what we would con consider to be pastry elements at the moment. There, it's really smooth. It's the CO2. It's quite low carbonation, but yet at the same time, it's uh, it, it's spritzy and it, it has life to it. It's um, Um, just like Paul did, I'll say one thing about Boundary as well. So, um, we did a collaboration with Boundary back in 2018. Um, this was for... I can't remember the name of the beer. Um, we just prepared to edit that out. Waterfall. Was, this, was that the first one, the Dipper? Yeah, Waterfall. Yeah, and we did Waterfall. Like everybody knows that in, uh, now and again, Things just don't go right in a brewery. The beers, they don't come out the way we want them to come out. Um, all best intentions are there, but they don't come out that way. We had maybe a pallet of cans, so we're looking at 2,400 cans, maybe more. I'm not sure of the exact number. The day we were doing this collaboration with the guys from Boundary, rather than sitting around, or they, they what they did is they just, they, incredible, just helped us actually get rid of some of the cans which was a really amazing thing for them to do at the time it was they didn't have to do it but it just showed what down to earth what what absolutely sound guys they were and uh it really sort of it it it, it they uh they captured our imagination that day and uh, not just through just helping us doing something we didn't want to do but because it was um but because they just they were just there and they they they, they were always ha they were always having a good chat with us they would talk to every single member of staff there was no sort of uh just hang around of, with the brewers it was always a really it, they felt like it that they wanted to know everybody and um and for us that was uh that was something that we really liked you know so this is why we why we've done more numerous collaborations with them and brought them to friends and family of course and another reason why we're why we want to have their beer over here right now because they are uh, a very close friend of all of us. Next, please, is uh, White Flag is raised. Marker Head Brewer, this is his bad boy, from name to design to brew. Don't undersell us. We should be in one of those uh, description sites. One of the premium ones. It's a rye IPA. Loads of uh, <coughs> cascade in here. Good bit of pine, kind of spicy. Um, we find it in this beer, the Cascade hops work really, really well with the, with the rye and the crisp bill. Yeah, that's good kind of like grapefruity, zesty, flashiness to it. If that's words that make sense to people other than myself. Um, 
wee bit of spice from the rye. It's characterised quite well with the with the cascade that accentuates it and puts a wee kind of like citrus note on top. Quite delicious and very different from the, the hoppy beers that we normally do. Smells pretty juicy. It smells very thick. It's good, got a lot of white grape. Um, quite bitter as well, um, for how murky it is. Boundary do is like this really well, um, despite them having uh, quite a cobbled together bit of kit. Um, they managed to make some really good, really clean beers. Mm. It's hard to do this kind of beer on um, pretty much like dairy equipment. Um, but the guys have like invested quite heavily in fermentation vessels, which gives them way more control than um, say people with just open fermentation who uh, can't dry hop in the same way that you can in a closed conical. Um, so they've kind of invested in the right places, I think. You can make work on anything. You can make work in buckets, home brewers have shown that, but um, they control the fermentation really well, um, which is key. Of a juxtaposition to that area, um, just to see people just love beer and want better beer for themselves um, in a place with such weird laws. I'd say the laws are the weirdest thing about boundary. Basically the favourite part of my job is naming the beers. I get the beers pretentious and obnoxious as I like to be, which suits me fine because it comes easily to me. So this is a rebrew of something we did in the last quarter last year and uh, it's really incredible. So we're back to our kind of regular boundary grist case bill, which is uh, base malt and then uh, loads of oats and wheats in different varieties and forms and then Fuck as much hops as we dare into the beer. So this is 50-50 uh, Nelson and Citra. So it's mostly um, kind of like the, the, the wine minus uh, fruity fragrant that you get from the Nelson along with a kind of bit of grapefruit in there and then the Citra just plays an undernote to it. Uh, it's drinking amazing. Uh, we might just start brewing this quarterly if we can get enough Nelson. Um, but yeah, I think this is great. We're really proud of it. Excited to sell some online to customers, um, so there we go. 6% IPA, more of a phenomenon, fuck that's so good. <laughs> yes.